Chucho TV Story Time It was in the lovely school district of Scottsdale. The district hosted one of the best schools by name, Scottsdale Junior High. Chica, Chiku, Choo Choo, Cha Cha, and Cusley, who were the thickest of friends, went to the school. One fine day, the teacher asked the kids, Little ones, those who know how to make little snacks for yourself, please raise your hands. None of the kids raised their hands. Aw, that's okay. We are going to do a little project. We are going to make our snack for tomorrow. Ask your mom to teach you how to make a few snacks that we would want. I want you little ones to make your snacks tomorrow. That would be great, Miss Dorothy! So, who all have brought your snacks today? Except for Chiku and Chica, the others raised their hands. Chiku and Chica, why haven't you both brought your snack today? My mother was not home to make me my snack, Miss Dorothy. She had to go to the hospital to attend to my ailing grandma. Oh, I'm sorry about your grandma. Class, who is ready to share your snack with Chiku and Chica? Good! Proud of you, little ones. Listen, I'm going to make a shuffle in the seating arrangement. Sure, Miss Dorothy. Chiku, you move over and sit with Cha-Cha. Chica and Cusley, you move over and sit with Choo-Choo. Since Cusley did not offer to share his snack with Chica, Cusley felt hesitant in asking Choo Choo for a share. Her soft, gentle, and lovely nature made her offer a share to Cusley. You would love this, Cusley. Try a bit of my snack. Cusley felt ashamed for what he had done. He felt bad and wanted to make it up. The school bell rang and the kids left for their homes for the day. So, little ones, have you all learned to make your favorite snack? Yes, Miss Dorothy. Could we have them displayed on your tables, please? All the kids put their preparations on the table. Cusley had put four boxes on his table. You made four boxes for yourself? No, Miss Dorothy. I made more for it to be shared with my friends! Oh, that was so sweet of you. I'm so proud of you, Cusley. We all are! The teacher was extremely happy. And the whole class was. This was in a quiet suburb in the city of Scottsdale. The suburb had a nice school and a lovely park. A little girl named Choo Choo and her younger brother Cha Cha lived in the lovely suburb. 
Next door lived a little girl, Chiku, with her brother, Chika. They all went to the same school and were very close friends. After school, they loved playing in the neighborhood park. One day, while playing, they had noticed a man sleeping under a tree. This man seems to be sleeping whenever we see him. Oh yeah, I noticed that too. Should we find out whether he's sick and needs help? No, let's not go near strangers and talk to them. But we should help. Once we go home, let's tell Mom and try to help him. You are right. Let's do that. Choo Choo, Cha Cha, Chiku, and Chica started to play. <laughs> I need to get rid of these kids. They are disturbing my sleep. Need to make sure they never come back. Looking around, the man noticed a few paint cans. Mommy, there is a man in the park who is always sleeping. We fear that he is sick. We wanted to tell you and get him help. Good job. I shall look into it. Choo Choo's mom called the mayor's office and reported. The mayor's office assured to have a look into it. The mayor visited the park and he put a community notice. Homeless man. The mayor left the park and the man started to paint the monster. The weekend had started. The kids head towards the park wanting to play. Choo Choo's mom, with a book in her hand, sat on the park bench. Mommy! Mommy! All of a sudden, Choo Choo's mom heard the kids scream. Whoa! What's wrong? Why did you all scream? Why are you trembling? The kids pointed their fingers towards the painting. She saw the monster's painting and held the kids. She distracted them by giving them some toys and a little candy. She called the mayor's office and reported this incident. Folks, till we figure this out, let's not send the kids to the park alone. Play safe! And yell out if you get scared. I'm right here. Just play where I can see you. We play right here and we'll be safe. As they were playing, they see the man shivering. Cha-Cha, looks like the man is really sick. Look at him shivering. You were right. Let's go tell your mom. The kids run and tell Choo Choo's mom what they had seen. Good job, little ones. Let me call for an ambulance to take him to the hospital. And the man got better. Who brought me to the hospital? He was told about the kids who found him sick. The man felt bad of his misdeed. Discharged from the hospital, the man went to the park. He saw the kids playing from a distance. I was being mean to these little kids. It's time to make it right. Let me remove the scary monster picture I had painted. 
from that day onward, he sat and enjoyed watching the kids playing. He watched over them and kept an eye on them ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a boy named Cusley. He had grown to be a naughty kid. He pushed his friends down, bullied them, and wanted his way around in everything. His friends were soft and forgiving in nature. They just put up with his harsh and rough behavior, thinking he would change. He had the bad habit of tearing his books, throwing his clothes, and breaking his toys. It was not going to be long before someone taught him a lesson. It was a nice sunny day. His mom yelled out, Cusley! Your room looks like a garbage bin! Your clothes, toys, and books are all over the floor! I need the floor cleaned up with all your things put in place. I will be paying a visit to your room pretty soon. You don't want to be grounded, do you? Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Loud and clear. I'll make sure the floor is cleaned up. Wow, that was fast. This does not look like your room. Good job. Hmm? <laughs> Come on, let's go for a stroll and grab an ice cream. It's a treat for your hard work. Mommy, I feel tired and sleepy. Dinner is ready. Have an early dinner and hit the sack. Yeah, okay. Whoa! I so forgot that I had dumped these things on the bed. Now, get out of my bed and get back to where you belong. Cusley threw his books to the floor. He tossed his toys around and dumped his clothes under his bed. Now that my bed is cozy, let me put off the light and go to sleep. The next moment, Cusley was deep in sleep and was snoring away to glory. He started to mumble. He started to toss and turn in his sleep. The toy monster truck zooms past, trying to crush his toes. The books flew around crashing and bumping into him. The clothes piled up together and was trying to cover him. The toy robot was pulling his hair, jumping up and down on his tummy. Finally, the giant storybook that was hanging on the rack above him crashed onto his head with a bang. There was a loud thud. Cusley had rolled off the bed and was on the floor. He woke up shrieking, startled, dazed, and sweaty. Whoa! What was that? Looks like I had a dreadful dream. It was more of a nightmare. Let me get up and put my things in order. Let me put them where they belong. From that day onwards, he realized his folly and decided to be gentle to one and all. He promised that he will take good care of his books and toys.
It was a lovely village with a stream and a forest nearby. A mouse, a tortoise, a stork, and a deer were the thickest of friends lived in the forest. <laughs> the mouse stood up on the log of a fallen tree and said, These teeth of mine with which I chew Helps make a hole to escape through With my teeth and legs I trench a tunnel That ends in my burrow like a funnel The tortoise stood by the log and said Shell of mine is strong like steel Keeps me safe from being a meal Throw that rock on me at will See it crumble hitting my shell <laughs> The stork, wanting to show its strength Jumps in and said to the tortoise Big strong beak and my feathery wings With ease can carry small and big things Hop onto my back and go on a flight Up in the air where you feel so light the deer jumped in and said, These legs of mine are so strong. Use them I do and run for long. Hind legs of mine that help me jump. Land on my front too without a bump. They started to play with each other and realized they were getting hungry. Tired we are since it's time for lunch. Our tummy needs a share of munch. Should eat some food and play again. Strength we will all stand to gain A hunter standing behind a tree Heard the deer and its friends talk The hunter said to himself This deer that's going to get his grace Follow him I will through this maze It would make my dinner at the least I should hunt it and make a feast Ha 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 Three of them made a plan to save their friend from the hunter. Hop into my mouth and on my back, I can carry a boat like a gunny sack. We together should save our friend from the evil hunter we should defend. Come on! The stork flew low on top of a pond and said to the tortoise, Jump in the pond as we have planned Pretend to be hurt and lie on the land Jump on the hunter and rattle him Aim he will miss once you startle him Dear friend of ours will escape his aim And will strip the hunter of his game Hunter! Hunter! Run! Run! Deer starts to run. The mouse quickly gnawed on the bowstring and snapped it. Having lost his dinner, the hunter was annoyed. I won't let go of this tasty deer. Act of the mouse. I won't fear, need no bow, no the arrow, swift I will be, like a sparrow, ha 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 ha. Not giving up his hunt, the hunter chased the deer with all his energy. All of a sudden, the hunter's chase came to a grinding halt. The hunter noticed the tortoise which pretended to lie hurt. I'm so tired trying to catch the deer Failed to hunt him when he was near We'll hunt and eat him on another day We'll cook and feast on this tortoise today Sss, Yummy!
lost his hunt. The hunter went back home empty-handed. The stork sees the hunter leave and swoops down and whistles. Hop on, hop on, my dear little friends. We should comfort our dear friend. When we find him, he would be in fear. Let's hug him and tell him we are here. Look, there he is, looking all scared. Let's comfort him. They hug and comfort it in reassurance. The four of them start to dance and play once again. They recollected the incident, laughed and said, We should remember this and should be alert. It was in the lovely suburb of Scottsdale. Woken up by the sun, the city was starting to get busy. A little girl by the name Choo Choo lived in the suburban house. Little Choo Choo had woken up and gotten ready to go to school. Walking down the stairway, her nose was lured towards the kitchen by a mouth-watering smell. Her mommy was busy making breakfast to be put into her lunchbox. Good morning, mommy. Good morning, sweetheart. Mmm, smells good. What is it? It's my grandma's secret recipe. Spicy chickpea sandwich. Is it for breakfast? Mm-mm. It's for your lunch. Mmm! Yummy! Thank you, Mommy! Choo-choo! Your school bus would be here any minute. We need to start moving. I'm ready. Let's go. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Her stomach started to grumble. She was waiting for the lunch bell to go. Would you like to share the spicy chickpea sandwich that my mommy has made today? I love that. Okay, here we go. Choo Choo opens it to find the sandwich missing. Her eyes were filled with tears. Looks like someone has eaten the sandwich and left your lunchbox empty. Don't cry. We'll figure this out later. Come on, share my lunch with me. They both shared Chico's lunch and the apple Choo Choo had brought went back to class.
Looks like you are sleepy. Come on, Choo Choo. It's sleepy time. Next day. Cry. Share my lunch with me. Looks like someone is being mean to you. Let's put an end to this act. How do we do that, Chiku? We can both handle hot, spicy food. Ask your mom to make the sandwich spicier. I'm sure no one else can handle it. They might not want to eat a spicy sandwich. Sounds good. Yeah! Good morning, Mommy. Good morning, sweetheart. Mommy, can you make me two sandwiches? And could you make it spicier? Sure, sweetheart. Be careful. It might be too spicy. Bye-bye, Mommy. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you too. and Chiku rushed to find Harry run towards the boys' toilet. They both went to the locker and found the half-eaten sandwich. They smiled at each other. From that day onwards, Choo Choo's lunch was intact for her to share it with Chiku. In a lush green savanna, there lived a pride of lions. The Lion King was basking in the sun, relishing his cup play with him. The lioness sat by the Lion King, adoring her cub play with the king. Not so far away, there lived a chief mouse with his loyal subjects. The chief mouse was sitting on a rock enjoying the naughtiness of the lion cub. A naughty mouse stepped out of the burrow wanting to play with the lion. The chief mouse realized the naughty mouse's intent and said, Naughty mouse! Do not go and disturb the Lion King. Why not, sire? What would the Lion King do to me? He will get so angry that he will roar and eat you. <laughs> you are just saying it to scare me, sire. The naughty mouse ran towards the Lion King. The chief mouse was stunned by the action of the naughty mouse. 
The naughty mouse pulled the mane of the Lion King and made it into a soft bed and laid down on it. The naughty mouse's act annoyed the Lion King, who was playing with his cub. The Lion King showed his anger by roaring and tossed the naughty mouse away with his nail. The naughty mouse rolled, bumped into his friends and all of them fell down. The Lion King marched towards the naughty mouse and roared. The naughty mouse was shivering with fear. Looking at this, the chief mouse ran and stood in front of the Lion King and said, Forgive the youngling, O oh mighty king. Chief Mouse yelled at the naughty mouse and asked him to leave and turned towards the Lion King and said, O oh mighty king, forgive the youngling for his mistake. The youngling has angered me and needs to be punished. I will eat him. Oh, mighty king, I offer myself in his place. <laughs> I will eat you both. The chief mouse halts and draws his sword and says, In that case, I have no option than to fight you to protect my subjects. The Lion King was taken aback by the chief mouse's reply. The Lion King takes his paws towards the Chief Mouse. The Chief Mouse shivered with fear but still got ready to defend himself. The Lion King said, I am so happy to see your courage and care for your subjects. Your intent to want to end this role has impressed me to let you both go. The chief mouse was so happy to hear this and said, I thank the mighty king and I hail. We'll repay this kindness without fail. A few days went by. The lion king and the lioness were out walking in the savanna. A hunter had laid a trap cage to catch the Lion King. The Lion King, without knowing, falls in the trap. Our King! Our King! He is trapped in a trap cage laid by a hunter! We need to go and make way for his escape! <sighs> the chief mouse was going for his evening walk and notices the Lion King in the trap cage. his whistle, an army of mice came running, thinking their chief was in danger. The chief mouse points his fingers towards the trap cage and said, Let's all work towards releasing the mighty king! Let's do it! Charge! All the mice started chewing on the trap cage and the cage gave way. The lioness jumped with joy. Oh, mighty chief, I thank you and your subjects for saving my life. Oh, mighty king, please do not mention. I am so happy that I could repay the kindness you showed. <laughs> <laughs> 
sparing our lives. Next morning, the Lion King and the Lioness were sitting and basking. Both of them noticed the chief mouse going for his walk. The Lion King and the Lioness gave the chief mouse a smile and saluted him. The chief mouse returned the smile and the salute. From that day on, they were the thickest of friends and lived happily ever after. Joey! Joey! There you are! Joey, you've been doing a great job guarding the farm and the animals. I have a reward for you for all your hard work. Here, let me reward you with this nice big bone. Joey was so happy and showed his happiness to his master by wagging his tail. Joey took the bone and ran to his kennel. He was so happy that he was gifted with a bone for his hard work. He jumped with joy and kissed the bone since the bone was a prized gift and said, I wish to celebrate this day by eating the bone all by myself. The other dogs in the neighborhood came to visit Joey to play with him. Joey did not want to share the bone with them. So he growled, barked at the other dogs. The other dogs, hurt by his action, left to play by themselves. Joey took the bone in his mouth and said to himself, Calls for a celebration! Let me take the bone to the park and eat it all by myself. With the bone in his mouth, he started walking towards the park, pretending not to see the other dogs. The other dogs, hurt by Joey's action, sat there all sad. While crossing the bridge, he saw his own reflection in the water through the gap in the bridge. I told the neighborhood dogs not to follow me and yet they follow me, trying to grab my bone. Let me growl, snarl and bark at them. The bone he was carrying in his mouth fell into the stream. <gasps> Boo hoo hoo! I feel sad that I lost the bone. <laughs> Feeling sad losing the bone, he sat by the side of the stream. The neighborhood dogs were starting to feast on the food they had fetched. They saw Joey sitting all sad by the stream. Hey Joey, why are you sitting here all sad? Joey narrates what had happened. They asked Joey not to feel sad and shared their food with him. Joey recollected his misdeed. Felt ashamed for not offering food to the neighborhood dogs. 
In the meanwhile, a man was sitting by the stream and catching fish with his fishing rod. He threw the hook inside, which caught the bone that Joey had dropped. Upon realizing that it was not a fish, the man threw the bone. The bone landed by Joey's feet. All excited, Joey yelled, It's my bone! It's my bone! I got it back! The next moment, he was reminded of his friends. He hailed his friends and shared the bone with them. From that day onwards, they were the thickest of friends and lived happily ever after. Deep in a dense jungle, there lived a family of parrots in their nest. The mother parrot had laid her eggs in the nest. The parrots said to each other, The rainy season is around the corner and the little ones are about to be born. Let's go collect and store food for feeding the little ones. The parrots flew in search of food. A snake that lived in a mud burrow under the tree heard the parrot speak. The snake said to himself, Let me feast on the eggs while they are gone. The snake climbed the tree and crept into the nest. It looked at the eggs with an evil grin and started feasting on them. The parrots after collecting food, returned back to their nest. <laughs> they found the broken eggshell and they started to cry. <laughs> A monkey hunting for fruits came by that side. Looking at the parrot's cry, the monkey said, Sad to see you both in tears. Tell me the story. I am all ears. The sad parrots replied to the monkey. While we were gone in search of food, my eggs were eaten by this snake with a hood. The monkey, hearing the parrot's story, felt sad and it asked the snake, Why did you eat the eggs that were in the nest? The snake with a mean mind hissed and snapped at the monkey and said, How dare you! Question me once more and I will bite you. The monkey sits all sad with the parrots. Monkey gets an idea. Monkey calls a crow. Caw! Caw! Monkey then narrates what had happened and tells the crow. The princess removes her jewel while she takes a shower. Can you fly into the courtyard, pick the jewel, and drop it into the snake's burrow? Crow agrees to the idea and said, Caw, caw! I'd be more than happy to do that, to get rid of the mean snake. Caw! The crow then flies to the castle and sees the princess taking a shower. It sees the royal jewel on the table. The crow then swoops down, grasps the jewel and flies towards the snake's burrow. The maid of the princess notices it and yells out to the guards. Crow thief! Crow thief! Stole the jewel! Catch! Catch! The guards hear the maid shriek and start to run behind the crow. They notice the crow drop the jewel into the snake's burrow and perch on the tree. The jewel landed on the neck of the sleeping snake. Wow! That's a lovely jewel! 
the guards with their spear, dug the snake's burrow, and the snake came out. The guards asked the snake to hand over the jewel, and the snake said, This is mine! Finders keepers, and losers are weepers! Na 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 na! The guards got so angry and killed the snake with their spear and took the jewel away. The parrot, monkey and the crow let off a big sigh. The parrots thanked the monkey and the crow for their help and lived with their younglings happily ever after. Deep in the jungle, there lived a flock of birds. The elder bird in the flock always guarded the younglings. A hunter sees the birds and said, Let me throw some nuts and grains and lay a trap. I need to hunt them and take them home for dinner. The younglings noticed the nuts and grains on the ground. The younglings did not realize that it's a trap. They flew towards the nuts and grains to collect them. The elder bird stopped them and said, Younglings, food does not come free in the jungle. Anything that comes without hard work is not good. The hunter overhears the elder bird talk to the younglings. The hunter was disappointed and started to walk away. As he starts to walk, he hears the elder bird say that it is time to collect some food. The hunter notices the elder bird leave and he said to himself, Oh yeah, the elder bird has left. It's my best chance to capture the younglings. Noticing the nuts and grains, the younglings flew down, wanting to collect them. They got trapped while collecting the nuts and grains. We got trapped! <gasps> the hunter with a sheepish grin and scary laugh said, Ha 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 ha! I got you all! Be ready to get into the birdcage! The younglings got so scared! <gasps> and started to cry for help. Help! 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 The elder bird, returning from the hunt, heard their cry. I told you younglings not to be cheated by anything free. Look what has happened now. The elder bird notices a youngling Try to break free from the net. Heed to me, younglings. Look at how these ants work together to carry the big chunk of food. Likewise, flop your wings together and you will realize your strength. It was a surprise to see what happened next. The younglings flapped their wings together and the trap broke free from the ground. The younglings were up in the air with the trap. The hunter came running just to see the younglings fly away and said, Oh well, 
I failed to capture them. The hunter was so disappointed that he threw the cage and went away. The little younglings broke free from the trap and went back to their nest. They remembered the lesson learned and lived happily ever after. It was a quiet little suburban town called Parkland. The town was admired by its neighbors for a big park it had. The mayor and the locals thought that the park would be more lively if it had animals. They decided to get a cute baby elephant to be the park mascot. They went to the nearby zoo and adopted a baby elephant and brought it back to the park. The baby elephant was so naughty, yet sweet and adorable. The locals and their kids brought fruits from their home and fed the baby elephant. The baby elephant was so happy and played with the kids who visited him. One day, three little boys who were naughty came to see the elephant. They saw the locals feeding the elephant with fruits. One of the boys had a banana in his hand. The boy wanted to play a prank on the elephant. The boy said to himself, Let me place a stone inside the banana and feed it to the elephant and see what he does. The boy picked up a stone and placed it inside the banana with an evil grin. The boy gave the banana to the baby elephant but started eating it happily. The boy said to his friends, I have placed a stone inside the banana and have fed it to the elephant. All three of them looked at the baby elephant and snigger. The baby elephant, while eating the banana, bit the stone. The baby elephant was in so much pain. The boy and his <laughs> friends were giggling and sniggering. They were boasting among themselves of their <laughs> evil deed. The baby elephant took note of this. Since it was getting dark, the boys left to their homes. The next day was the naughty boy's birthday. His mother had gotten him a new shirt. The boy wore the new shirt to play with his friends. The baby elephant notices the boys and decided to reciprocate the evil deed. The baby elephant thought to itself, Hmm, I should teach the boy a lesson. This will make him not to play this prank again on anyone else. The baby elephant noticed a muddy puddle near the play zone. The baby elephant silently went to the place where the boys were playing. In a whisker, it splashed the puddle of muddy water on the boy with its trunk. The boy was drenched by the muddy puddle water. The boy started to cry, saying, My new shirt! My new shirt! It's all dirty! And so am I! <laughs> the baby elephant felt bad <gasps> looking at the boy cry. Oh, I feel bad looking at the boy cry. Let me make the boy feel better. It thought and said to itself, Let me clean the boy up with clean water from the nearby stream. The baby elephant ran to the nearby stream and filled its trunk with clean water. The baby elephant went to the boy 
and sprayed the clean water from its trunk. The mud on the boy was all washed away, yet the boy was drenched. The baby elephant went to the boy and with its trunk blew a lot of air and dried him up. The boy recollected his misdeed and said, I am sorry for being mean, baby elephant. The elephant smiled and extended its trunk and shook the boy's hands. The boy smiled at the baby elephant and told him, Please wait. The boy runs and fetches a banana and gives it to the baby elephant. Elephant hugged the boy with his trunk. The baby elephant took the banana from his hands and ate it. From that day onwards, they were the thickest of friends and lived happily ever after.